Let me just provide you with the context. Uh, when you look at the World Economic Forum, which was created in 1979, it was first created more or less as a convener of leaders to join for a dialogue at big conferences. But then we decided that um, it's not enough to have conferences. Actually, what we need is to integrate people on a continuous basis into communities. And for this reason, we became a membership organization. And we integrated many other communities, particularly in the scientific world. For example, I see here some of our tech pioneers into the interaction of the World Economic Forum. We finally became very active in terms of shaping global thinking and uh, we are at the origin of some basic concepts in the world. If I look what I'm particularly concerned about and preoccupied with uh, today, it is how little the world is unprepared for the fourth industrial revolution. Why is it the fourth industrial revolution? Some people say, no, it's the third. Let me just recapitulate. The first one, of course, we all know, was the steam engine. The second one was the invention of mass production, electricity, the Ford the T model. The third one was the computer and the beginning of the internet. And now people ask, but isn't the fourth industrial revolution just a continuation of the third? And my answer is definitively no. Why? There are four reasons. The first one is that the speed of the fourth industrial revolution is mind-boggling. I started to write the book a year ago, and I have to say, a year ago, I just remember, I had to explain to a banker what fintech is. All those new blockchain, um, self-driving cars and so on, which were considered to be futuristic, became reality just over the last 12 months. And you have been at the forefront of this fast implementation of the new innovative drive. The second difference of the fourth industrial revolution is that it is not just one technology. People say sometimes, yes, it's a digital revolution. No, it's not just a digital revolution. It is many other areas. It's brain research, nanotechnology, and I could go on and on, the life sciences and so on. It's a fusion of the physical, the digital, and the biological world. That's really the essence of the fourth industrial revolution. Now, the third change is the fact that it is a systems revolution. It is not so much a product revolution where you bring out new products or create new services. It is changing existing systems. Just think of Uber or Airbnb or of shared economy. It is not a new product, I repeat, but it's a system as such which is changed. It doesn't just change what we are doing. If you look at the first three revolutions, it made us more productive, it helped us to communicate faster, to communicate with more people, to help us in our consumption patterns and so on. But the fourth industrial revolution is actually changing ourselves. It's changing not only what we are doing, it's changing who we are. Just look at uh, the pattern today of young people. That's why I became so interested in this whole domain. And I tried not to write a book which uh, describes uh, robots or which describes a specific technology, but I wanted, in a very small book, I wanted to explain to everybody, also ordinary people who are not very much familiar with technology, I wanted to explain what does it really mean for us. I also wanted to show 
the cis revolution at the end offers so many opportunities for humankind. It offers us to create a much greener economy. It offers us to create much more opportunities to develop our potential. Just think of the ubiquitous access to knowledge which we have. And I could go on and on. But I think we have to explain to everybody that this revolution, there are some risks which we have to get under control, but there are many more opportunities. And at the end, I'm, if I look very far ahead, I feel that we are at a threshold of uh, human society. I think it gives us the opportunity at the end, with the help of robots, with the help of those technologies, to find a new sophistication for humanity, which means a kind of renaissance, to become more creative, to become more society-oriented, to show more a feeling of solidarity, because it frees us from the traditional production and consumption cycles.